And we're coming live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. We're still doing Meet the Candidates. I'm still Paul Herring, and you're still going to learn a lot about what's going on in local politics if you stay tuned, all right? I want to make sure you um, have the opportunity to get involved with public access. If you have a desire to be on uh, television on Channel 17, you can always give us a call here at 810-239-2901. Now, with that said, I... I'm sitting across from a gentleman that I know, uh, I know for many, many years. many, many years. I don't know if I can say I like him or not, <laughs> uh, but I do know him. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right in with Brother Omar Sims, and you're running for the 34th, 34th district, 34th right, yeah. district state rep. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself, Omar? First of all, I'd like to say thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank the residents of Flint for giving me an opportunity for believing me. I'm no stranger to this community. I'm a graduate of this community. And from the time I was in high school up until now, I've been actively engaged in this community. I believe in this community. I believe in the people of Flint. And I know that our best is yet to come. We're ready. We're fired up. And we're ready to get the job done. So, Paul, thank you. And the residents of Flint, thank you for supporting me through all the years from a council member to a county commissioner right now. That's what I think. I think you've got quite a history. Here in this community, well, you history, might want to let the people know a little bit about, uh, I guess, your climb to fame. Well, Paul, believe it or not, my history started when James Sharp was mayor of the city of Flint, okay. and as a high school student, Mayor Sharp issued a challenge. I issued a challenge to him, and it was about the sidewalk across the street from Northwestern High School. Okay. We had two students got hit by a car, right? Uh -huh. And after working this campaign, I said we need to address that issue. Less than two weeks. Since he was in, when he was in, in office, guess what? Mm -hmm. He put a sidewalk there. That allowed, you know, that affected public policy, and that showed me that, hey, we could make a difference. And then in 1985, 86, working under Mayor Sharp, mm -hmm. this is before most people, some folks weren't even born. We didn't have cross-town right in with the MTA. Mm -hmm. We did a survey under the leadership of Howard the Green and Human Relations Commission, and guess what we did? We got cross-town right in um, from from Pearson Road, mm -hmm. and Henry Horton was MTA, so I was a high school student doing that. Okay. And then when I went off to college, I came back home, and I could have went to Chicago, I could have went to New Orleans, I could have went anywhere. But guess what? I got involved in this community. I was the first program officer of the Neighborhood Small Grants Program. Okay. And some of the work that the neighborhood groups are doing, you know, I don't like to toot my horn, but the fruit of it is my work. So. When people talk about me, I was a youngster involved in this community, so I just didn't wake up one day, hey, say, I want to get involved. It's a way of life for me. Okay. So, I mean, that's going to segue perfectly into to asking you, why state rep? Why not president? Why not uh, senator? The reason state rep is because, again, I had the challenging experience of being a count, city council, mm -hmm. and then as a county commissioner, and the two different worlds. The city primarily dealt with the city issues. County, I was able to deal with the sheriff department, land bank, community mental health, the park system. Mm -hmm. And so the state is an excellent because they need leadership. Mm -hmm. This community needs a voice who understands the issues of the people and also somebody who work with Lansing. We need somebody to be aggressive due to term limits. We need somebody to hit the ground running. I'm a graduate of Michigan Political Leadership Program. I've spent time in Lansing. I serve on several boards on the, with the county that affect local issues. Okay. So by me going to Lansing, it's a continuation. And guess what? The people in this community, they made an investment in me, and now it's time to get a return. And that investment, public service. It's not theory. It's practical. Mm -hmm. what, makes you, what makes you a good candidate for a state rep? First and foremost, I'm a man of integrity. Okay. When I say I'm going to do something, I get it done. And I'm, we've proven it. For example, when the people of Flint, as a county commissioner, when they had issues regarding Carpenter Road, the payment industry, for two and a half years, I worked with the Road Commission, worked with the state, and even worked with the city. And guess what we did? We got it done. It took time. We didn't have the money. 
But guess what? We got it done. And also, when it came down to the blight of Carmen Roll, the apartment piece, guess what? We got it done. And then here's the other thing that I'm really proud of. We have so many young men and women who, when they were young, they made a mistake. They committed a crime. They did their time. When they returned, guess what? They're not going to New Orleans. They're not going to New England. You know where they're returning? Here. And as a county commissioner, I just spearheaded a piece. And I don't like to say what I did because it's a team. See, I'm not bigger than a team. But one of the things that we did at the county, we just passed ban the box. And that took some time. And so what's your point? Well, my point is this. We're coalition building. And as a state representative, you have to work bipartisan. So I'm able to build a little coalition. I'm able to work with commissioners in the 7th District, 8th District, 9th District. And I'm able to work with different community stakeholders. So that's what makes me a prime candidate because as a state representative, guess what? Everybody's not from an urban area. I have to work with individuals from Lapeer, up north, the western part of the state, and the southern region. And they need somebody who can articulate, somebody who's willing to roll their sleeve, to work together, and put I aside, and do what's in the best interest of the state. And it's stated we're at a critical period in our time, and we need individuals who understand, who's willing to work together. It's not about I, it's about us. Why? Well, it seems like you're probably pretty well connected in the city, but why would an out-county person want to, to vote for an Omar Sims? Why would, why would they vote for you? Well, the primary, the 34th district is the city of Flint. Okay. And so I'm relying on the city of Flint residents. Nice. However, the individuals in the out-county, I can walk into any grocery store, whether it be on the south side, east side, anywhere in the county, and I have somebody come up to me and say thank you. Thank me for what? Because at one point in time, I made a difference. I don't do this for glory. I do it because it's a way of life. So those individuals from the other part of the county, they understand that it's not about an ego. It's not about what I can do. It's about what we've done in the past. And I say what we've done in the past. As a county commissioner, we made sure for the past three years nobody was laid off. Mm -hmm. So we've affected their way of life. I attend events outside of the city. City of Flint. Beecher, my more is part of my district, and guess what? I'm proud of what we've done with community mental health, a facility on the beach area. So folks, even in Swartz Creek, I go out to their events, and sometimes they don't even know I'm a commissioner, because I don't say, look at me, I'm County Commissioner Sim. I'm just out there rolling up my sleeve, being a part of making a difference in this community. And the other thing, in 2010, we had the census piece, I was very much engaged in that. So, unfortunately, Paul, I do myself in this community a disservice when I don't talk about the things I do because I just do it. Because my greatest reward is thank you for my residents. Well, you mentioned the, um, the sidewalk back in the day, and you, yeah. you mentioned the uh, Apartment Hill uh, building more recently. More recently. And even Ban the Box, which is more than yeah. impressive. And then the other thing, something, you know, good, bad, and different, if you're a returning veteran, when you're in law enforcement, uh -huh. you can get a home from the land bank. Right. Something that I pushed. Okay. And that's huge. Right. And then let me talk about our park system. Genesee County Parks. We made it affordable for all residents to participate. And then the public safety people. I've been a major advocate of public safety. Now, I live here in Flint. I'm not going anywhere. Flint, we have some major issues, but one of the things I want to say as a priority, I would extend the invitation or I would challenge our governor, and that's why folks need to get out and vote, to come and spend the day in Flint with me and see for themselves if we're making a difference with crime. So when you talk about the out county people working with that was really what the question was going to be. I, I, I'm curious as to, I, I see kind of where you're going locally with your initiatives. We're talking about the blight in the apartment, the, uh, the no box. But when you get to the state, what type of priorities are you going to take to the state with you? Invest in education. You know, Paul, think about this. Our kids learn to read 
in K to third, third grade. That's when they learn to read, right? But they read to learn when they're what? Third, fourth grade to twelfth grade, right? But guess what? When do they learn to earn? But when they earn the learning, mm -hmm. we've got to make an investment in education. We've got to invest in STEM programs, science, technology, and manufacturing. We just can't give lip service to it. And then in regards to crime, public safety, yes, folks are grateful to for the state troopers, but guess what? Governor Snyder or Governor Shower, when you become governor, come spend time in Flint with me. Come walk the neighborhoods and see for yourself. Spend time with our officers, and then you tell me if crime is different. Then the other thing, let's spend time at Michigan Works, my community college, workforce development, retrain our individuals. As a commissioner and even at a state level, our seniors have been taxed. We've got to really address that issue. Let's talk about the term limit. So the Woodrow's been there how long? How He's long? been there six years. Six years. So it's six years in, six years out. Is six years enough no, it's time not. for you to do what you no, plan on not. doing? It's not enough time. But guess what? We're laying the foundation for somebody else. We're laying the foundation. And one of the things that I admire about our representative Stanley that I have in time with him. He's pushed job growth. He's pushed safe neighborhoods. He's pushed investing in our education. He's pushed protecting the rights of voters, democracy. He's pushed for working families. I will continue those things, but I'll do it my way. So six years is not enough, but guess what? If you don't get out and vote, six months, can make a difference. Six hours, six minutes. You remember Dougie Fresh, six minutes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, it's a big election. There's a lot of you guys running. Is it going to be tough, do you think, to make it through this, this cycle? For me, it's a way of life. Some people think elections start now. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. Every time I get up in the morning, I desire to serve. It's a life sentence for me. That's why my family is committed to this community. I can't focus on other individuals. The only person I can be responsible for is Omar A. Sims. And so with this election, it's part of the process because at the end, I believe the residents of the 34th District will vote for Omar A. Sims as their next state representative. Well, good. I'm glad you said that because I want to give you an opportunity to talk directly to the people in your district and convince them that a vote for you is the right vote for them. No, no, a vote for me is a vote for the people because I represent the people. I understand working families. I understand education. I understand blight. I understand seniors being taxed enough. I understand people wanting to be able to go somewhere and feel safe without the fear of violence. I understand the need to have money in your pocket to be able to go to work and buy your kids a nice meal or to take your wife. I understand the importance of having a quality education where the schools don't look like they look when you were in school. So as your next state representative, I will be a strong advocate for education, workforce development, public safety, and protecting our seniors. And the other thing is, I'm a coalition, compassionate consensus builder. That's why I'm endorsed by the UAW. That's why I'm endorsed by several local leaders, past and present leaders. But the most important endorsement vote I need is the people of Flint to give me the opportunity to serve. Some kids grew up wanting to be a doctor, a lawyer, a basketball player. I grew up wanting to be a public service, and I'm fulfilling my dream of serving this community. And so, presence of Flint, Omar A. Sims needs your, and we would appreciate your support, not only on election day, but when I move on, because you have to hold me accountable, because I am you and you me. All right. Listen, you're watching Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. You guys stick around. There'll be more. After this.